Hello there. Welcome to the Saroy channel, wherever you are in the world. And so much love to each and every one of you. For those of you that like to get to the juicy story where you have the straightforward Bigfoot encounter, well, I've got that for you on this channel right now. But the full stories are really worth listening to. And I've got them listed at the bottom because really just the Bigfoot encounter without the whole experience from the beginning to the middle and the end is really worth listening to. But if you just want to get to the juicy encounter that people have sent in to me, by all means, here are a few examples of them right now on my channel. So get straight into the business, shall we? And let's get started. My brother told me to shush, shh, shh. As we ventured forward, that was when we saw this hideous thing. And I have never, ever in my entire life ever seen something so hideously freakish and grotesque in all my born days. This colossal lizard-like humanoid was eight feet tall, five foot wide, and had human-like arms and long bow-like legs that were bulky and powerful, as well as thick and sturdy. It also possessed a very chunky tail that I believed helped the creature to balance, as it stood on two feet and was clearly bipedal. You know the distinct markings that you often see on colourful snakes? Well, the skin on this creature was exactly like that but it was bright red and tawny brown in its markings, and this was all over its body. It had a rounded face, much like a Komodo dragon, with a huge mouth and dagger-shaped sharp teeth, and it had lizard-like brown eyes and a large flicking tongue that I think was a sensor of some kind. My brother and I were so terrified by this horrendous-looking creature because we were in no doubt if he saw us he would eat us alive, but we could see he was growling at something else and we realised that it was another one of these creatures that was equally as ugly and grotesque and vicious as he was. But this creature was yellow and orange, and it possessed red markings on its face, and was a whole foot shorter than the other creature. I could not believe that the creatures were fighting over this human corpse. I recognised the T-shirt that the man was wearing almost immediately as belonging to one of the citrus workers, a man called Jacob, who was a worker on our family-run farm, a lovely person that my brother and I really warmed to because he was always telling us funny jokes and making us laugh. My eyes filled with tears when I observed the sorrowful, tragic scene unfolding before my very eyes, like something out of your worst, most horrifying nightmare, and knowing that Jacob's family would be devastated, devastated by his demise was even more horrifying. I could see that the head was disconnected from the neck and was lying separate from the body like a lone soccer ball. I thought it was extremely odd that these creatures were not willing to share the kill together, so to speak. The smaller of the two humanoids relented, surrender and resigned, and accepted defeat to the larger reptilian, which, which was just as well, I thought, because if he had not given in, I'm pretty certain he would have been killed. We watched him bustle away on his thick bow legs. We observed with absolute horror this ghastly creature gobbling and devouring Jacob's body and he was a messy, disgusting eater, splattering pieces of the corpse all over the place like cake crumbs being flung around a kitty's kid's playground. He made light work of Jacob's body, and had eaten everything in about fifteen minutes. My brother and I hightailed it back to our home as fast as we possibly could, to tell everyone that Jacob had been tragically killed and murdered by a hideously ugly lizard man. We were both crying hysterically, and were frantically terrified. Imagine our shock and confusion when Jacob, our farm worker, walked into the room and my parents assured us that he was indeed not dead. My brother and I ran open-armed towards Jacob, hugging him tightly between our sobs and saying, You're alive! You're alive! He looked at us with a shocked expression on his face and said, Is this supposed to be some kind of a sick joke or something? Of course I'm alive! As you can imagine, my brother and I were so confused because we rarely believed we'd actually seen Jacob being devoured and murdered by this heinous lizard-like humanoid, but maybe it really was a case of misidentification and someone that looked remarkably like Jacob, but I'm glad to say it wasn't him, had been killed instead. It was all decidedly odd, but my brother and I know what we saw and it was definitely real. We did hear that a couple of workers from a neighbouring farm had quite simply just vanished without a trace, so maybe one of these men 
was indeed killed by the lizard. The next time my brother and I saw that lizard-like creature again was when a man of very great prominence who is exceedingly wealthy and who travelled the entire world spontaneously came and visited our farm. None of your listeners would have ever heard of this man before, but I can assure you he did mix in very distinguished high-profile circles among the elite in South Africa, so to speak. Even my father was astonished and surprised by this curious, unexpected, spontaneous visitation from such a very distinguished, affluent and high-profile guest, because he did not even know the man in question. My mother welcomed this man warmly and gave him some coffee and some milk tart to eat, and she sat him down and fussed over him. But there was something odd about him. His reactions were very strange, and his behaviour was exceedingly odd. There was something that was not quite right about him, but I couldn't put my finger on what it was. He then proceeded to ask if he could actually go for a walk on his own, which was also pretty strange behaviour from a guest that my parents were entertaining, but they were eager to oblige his every need, and so they reluctantly let him explore our farm all on his own, without any guidance or direction. He told my parents he just wanted to observe all the orange groves for himself, but my brother and I noticed that he circumnavigated the orange groves and bypassed them and went straight to the stream. My brother and I decided to follow him and spy on him because we knew that his behaviour was not right. I think we sensed that something was insidiously artful about him. There was something slippery and unscrupulous that gave us the creeps and made our hair stand on edge. The next thing I knew that this conniving, treacherous man was literally standing on the edge of the stream, and believe it or not, we couldn't believe it ourselves, he was actually talking to two lizard creatures, both whom were very colossal, and were a plain brown colour, not like the bright coloured ones we'd seen before, and they seemed very intent on their conversation with this man. They all appeared to discern each other. We did notice that the conversation seemed very intense, critical and of a serious consequential nature. They talked between each other for a while, and then the man came back to the house and told my parents that their, oranges grow, their orange groves were spectacularly beautiful and enchanting. My brother interjected immediately and said, But you didn't go to the orange groves. You were at the stream talking to the very big human lizard. The artful duplicitous man looked embarrassed and said, Sorry, I don't know what your kid is talking about. After the man had left, my brother and I told my parents that this man had been talking to human-like lizards, and I backed him up on that. Within a day or so, I found myself sitting in a psychologist's office, undergoing these strange tests, and then it was my brother's turn to be interrogated. I found out that both my parents thought my brother and I had lost the plot, so to speak, and were imagining these strange lizard creatures on our land, but both my brother and I were declared as completely sane and of sound mind. I knew my parents did not believe our tales about the lizards, and so I began to warn my brother never ever to speak of it again, or people would think we'd lost our marbles. My brother was so determined to take a photograph of one of those lizards with a new Instamatic camera that our parents had given us, so that they would believe us. We literally hung around that stream for many days without any hope of a sighting, but I was terrified of actually seeing one of those grotesque creatures again, because they were so duplicitous and evil, with a very heavy menacing energy around them. One day we saw one of those creatures again, and my brother actually took a photograph of it, and I was so excited, because we managed to get a picture. We did this while we were hiding behind the tree. It was just standing there in the sun, flicking its tongue like a snake, and it appeared to be basking and enjoying the sun, almost as if it was sunbathing. Suddenly it turned around and looked in our direction, and my heart almost missed a beat. We heard it unleash this warning growl, as if it was saying, I know you're there. It did not physically see us, but I think it did feel us and sense us. Thankfully it didn't pursue us, but disappeared from our sight. As you can imagine, my brother and I could not wait to get the photograph developed from the Photoshop, and imagine our immense surprise and horror when all you could see was this huge grey smoky haze where the creature had stood. I emphatically believe that they have some natural cloaking device, because we know what we saw, but there was nothing to be seen in the photograph except for this grey splodge. So there you are, that is my incredible story, that I am so relieved to finally get off my chest. 
although I would like to remain anonymous, for obvious reasons, of course. My dad and my mother died within two years of each other, about twenty years ago, and my brother, Sir Thomas, sadly died in a motorbike collision five years ago, which is such a dreadful pity, because I would have loved him to share his side of the story with you. My parents' orange farm was sold to some high-ranking official who got rid of all our orange groves very, very sadly, and I have no idea or clue what he, what he uses the place for nowadays, but I do know two things. One is that there is something very intriguing going on on my father's land, and something evil is going on with those lizards, but who or what they are I cannot speculate and imagine, but it does appear that some of your listeners have a greater understanding of these curious things far more so than I do. So there we are. That's the juicy bits of our stories tonight. I personally think you should go back and listen to the whole story because it makes it so much more exciting because then you learn all about where it happened, the location, and all about the fabulous characters involved in the story. And that makes the story so much more gripping. But as I say, so go down to the description and then click on to the YouTube link and then you will hear the whole story. Until next time, goodbye and good night.